but it's already now available through a smartwatch. There's a device that has a Band-Aid like this that has all these chips in it that gets all this different data of vital signs. And uh, we have used this in West Africa to anticipate infections of Ebola and Lassa fever long before otherwise would be uh, possible. And this costs pennies to make and gets a uh, disproportionate amount of remarkable uh, accurate data. You can look at your phone to get your glucoses. And that's nice because while you're eating, you might change your eating habits or what exactly you're eating because you're seeing your glucose spike. Uh, and also, that, of course, that can also be uh, glances for glucose on your watch. And you can have uh, predetermined settings for thresholds of what you want it to be. This glucose sensor world is now into high gear because Google is now into it to make the tiniest uh, sensor that will be so inexpensive and factory calibrated so no one would have to do a finger stick and get glucose readings every five minutes. In fact, the sensors right now for glucose are remarkably small, and they're just going to get tinier and more accurate and much less expensive. So this is an amazing story for not just the people with diabetes, but the billion people on the planet that are pre-diabetic, that have risks if they don't have their glucose uh, homeostasis under better uh, control. This uh, extends, of course, into uh, by the way, the tech titan invasion, I've mentioned Google, but it extends far beyond that. All these large tech companies are making a major uh, move into the medical space. So they are now full-fledged medical entities uh, and not traditional uh, incumbents, but obviously uh, challenging some of the ways that medicine has been practiced. Another example is this ring from Finland which uh, has all kinds of chips inside of it. And it, by, by wearing it at night, you can get uh, sleep data that's as good as a hospital sleep lab. Instead of costing $3,500 for, I don't know how anyone could sleep normally in a hospital sleep lab. Uh, and then you have this data as well as oxygen saturation to get uh, data on sleep apnea. So it's really a, a great new tool for monitoring uh, an important metric of not just lifestyle, but a, a medical matter. Uh, just a few weeks ago at the Consumer Electronics Show, Omron, one of the trusted uh, uh, brands for home blood pressure, has a blood pressure watch, which is a nice uh, uh, device that will be approved later uh, this year by the FDA. And there's furthermore watches that get blood pressure continuously, even with passively while you're sleeping. And this is one example of that. And here is a blood pressure of mine for 24 hours. And this is, of course, great because we've never had a very good handle on blood pressure. And obviously, you know how important that is to control for the risk of strokes and heart attacks uh, and kidney damage. So this is, I think, a great thing forward. Data we never could get before. That is, uh, all the time, real-time streaming, uh, irrespective of one's asleep, in traffic, or whatever the setting. There's also, of course, not just digitizing the person, but the pill. And so you can have chips in a pill, and that's many different uh, studies are going on with that type of um, technology. But I think one that's even more alluring than having to put chips in a pill is using the smartphone uh, for medication adherence and tracking. So let me just show you on, uh, one of these companies working in this for artificial intelligence of medication adherence is this one. Here's a brief uh, video snippet to show you how it works. And so the uh, smartphone has pill AI for detection and person uh, facial recognition and knows exactly that the person's taken the pill, of course, with time uh, stamped and swallowed the pill. And this is markedly increasing uh, medication adherence for people who want to track their medications and, of course, for, for companies that are making drugs that are particularly expensive and important for adherence. Amazingly, there's now scanning uh, for food to see whether it's gluten-free, really, or what other potential uh, uh, problems are with food. And if you start going into restaurants and seeing people scanning their food with their smartphone, you'll know that that's because of these sensors that are growing for food, for constituents of what you might be eating. Now, the icon of medicine is the stethoscope. And this is the 200-year anniversary. And it's starting to get challenged. This is a Washington Post front page article a couple of Sundays ago. And what's interesting is this device is basically done. It's a non-digital 
uh, sound recording only. It's no scope. And this device, although it's been around for two centuries, it's about to be replaced. And in fact, uh, uh, I use, instead of a stethoscope for years, ultrasound. But more recently, in just the last couple of months, we now have smartphone ultrasound. So with a droid phone and then this probe, which there's different sizes of this probe, this is the largest one, you can get imaging of any part of the body. And this is what it looks like, so those who are further